Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I am presenting you with a bit of a different deck tech, with this deck's commander being Averna the Chaos Bloom. Averna is a legendary creature elemental shaman. She's a 4-2 that costs a green, a blue, and a red. And it reads, as you cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. The first thought when building this deck was that this deck is going to rely heavily off of Cascade cards, and there are not a lot of them. Before Commander Legends, there were only six cards in Teamer Colors that had the Cascade mechanic printed on them, and with the release of Commander Legends, there are 15 more that either have Cascade or have something to do with Cascade, including our Commander. That said, not all of these are necessarily good cards, and thus we're going to end up playing a bunch of spells in our deck that are not optimized and have little to do with our strategy other than having the ability to Cascade. For that reason, we've taken a different approach with this deck in that we're primarily focused on a CMC 6 plus matters theme. Since most of these Cascade spells are going to fit that mold, we're going to be casting a lot of high CMC spells and cheating out others with Cascade, all while ramping with our commander. Furthermore, in a twist for this channel, we're including Karuga as the first companion we've ever had on one of these deck techs. If you're not familiar with Companion, basically we're going to have a card with Companion written on it, and we're putting it in the sideboard. We can pay 3 mana to put it into our hand only if our deck follows the deck building restriction listed on the card. And then it's just like any other card in our deck. So here is what Karuga does. He's a legendary creature dinosaur hippo. He costs three and two Simic hybrid. His deck building restriction is that our starting deck contains only cards with converted mana costs three or greater and land cards. When he enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost 3 or greater. If we're going to go with the high CMC strategy, we may as well go all the way. Karuga limits us to only having spells that cost th at least 3 CMC, which means we don't have any 0 to 2 mana spells to cast in the early game. And that's a pretty heavy downside for most spells because that means ramp spells and mana rocks are going to be harder to come by. However, we are playing Averna, which is ramp in our command zone and is helping us with our cheating things into play strategy. These things combined will help Karuga give us extreme value in this deck and give us the card draw we need. One final note before we start the deck tech, we are playing some cards that have powerful effects and are less cost efficient. I feel that there is a necessity to balance out the low powered cascade cards with other cards that will make the trade off worth it. This is inherently going to be a stranger deck construction than we usually have because of all of the deck building restrictions we have. But feel free to play around with your Averna build and let us know in the comments what you were able to come up with. Before we dive into the meat of the deck, I think it is important to get our win cons out of the way first because there's a very important win con in our deck that will shape how the entire deck is constructed. Primarily, the deck wants to win off of combat damage from a bunch of creatures entering the battlefield and overwhelming our opponents. We'll talk more about the land synergies a little bit later, but, but we have three types of cards that are unique to our win con section. The first type is overrun effects, or effects that will pump up all of your creatures and give them some sort of evasion to swing through your opponents. I've elected to include and raise four runners in this deck as the only one of these that I have. But you could also include cards like Overwhelming Stampede, Crater of Behemoth, or Finale of Devastation if you have the budget for them. This will help with a full board of creatures that are ready to swing. The second type is cards like Warstorm Surge and Terror of the Peaks. These cards will deal damage to your opponents whenever a creature enters the battlefield. Since we have high CMC creatures, more often than not, they will have a high power attached to them as well, which means that these effects sitting on the battlefield are going to go a long way. The third type is a rather unique card called 
Primal Surge. It's a sorcery that costs eight and two green, and it says exile the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it on the battlefield. If you do, repeat this process. The reason why we've included this card in the deck is that this deck is very, very heavily permanent based. There are only seven non-permanent cards in the entire deck, including Primal Surge. So the goal with this card is to get as many permanents off the top as we possibly can. It's kind of like Cascade without actually cascading. I did try to make the deck without any non-permanents, but there were just a couple of gaps that would have opened up if we hadn't have included them. And we have four Cascade spells in the deck that are not permanents, and we can't lose out on those. Nevertheless, Primal Surge is almost guaranteed to go really deep into your library and finds tons of permanents, Running Primal Surge is always a really bold move and an interesting deck building choice for a commander deck, and I feel like this deck has the potential to really make it work. All right, let's go through the rest of the deck. Averna and Karuga do so much for us already on the ramp and card draw side, and Cascade is a kind of pseudo card advantage and mana advantage. So we have that going for us, but we do have some cards that will propel us along a little further and will make sure to enable us to cast big spells much quicker. For ramp, we have Azusa, Lost But Seeking, that lets us dump some extra lands from our hands if they get stuck in there. Then we have Animar, Soul of the Elements, which is an all-star in this deck. It helps majorly with the cost reduction. It gets huge. It synergizes well with our deck because we have 39 creatures in the deck, not including Karuga and Averna. So getting that reduction is huge. And every time we cascade, we're most likely going to be casting one or two creatures on average. And this just helps get to our big things faster. If you really wanted, Animar would probably be a pretty good commander on his own in this deck. Next, we have Galanra, Collar of Wirewood, a new card that rewards us with card draw when we use its mana to cast something with six CMC or greater. Great card for our deck, and it fits really well with Karuga's limitations. Croson Drover will discount all of our spells that cost six or more by two, which is the majority of the deck, so that's really nice to have. Next, we have Nylea Kenide, which discounts all of our creature spells by one, and it can help us with some card advantage, especially with the high volume of creatures in this deck. This is really nice. Nyxbloom Ancient, we're running green, and we are going to have a lot of lands, so this is quite the valuable spell to pull off the top, especially when we're cascading. Next, we have Peregrine Drake, which will let us untap a bunch of lands when it enters, which will enable us to keep on cascading if we have more gas in our hand. Next is Somber Wild Sage. Doesn't really help us get our commander out, but it does help us get most of the creatures in our deck out because of their high CMCs. This can be perfect for getting a turn four or five cascade trigger off of something huge. Thrix the Sudden Storm discounts any spell costing five or more, which is about two thirds of the spells in our deck. Next, we have Ketria Crystal and Chromatic Lantern. They are only two mana rocks in the deck, and they help us a lot with mana fixing. They provide all of the colors to us and make our lands more efficient. And finally, we have Growing Rights of Itlamok, which is basically an auto include in any creature based deck, and this deck has lots of creatures. The front gives us some card selection off the top, and the back is Gaia's Cradle, so can't really go wrong there. For our card advantage section, let's start with Beast Whisperer. Beast Whisperer will draw us a card every time you cast a creature, and since cascading is about casting, Beast Whisperer will trigger every time we cascade off of a creature and whenever we cascade into a creature, so that's a pretty sweet card to have in our deck. Fierce Empath is a tutor that will get us most of the impactful creatures in our deck and will most likely be used to get a cascade spell that we'll talk about later. Momir Vig Simic Visionary is the perfect companion to the cascade strategy. Basically, whenever we have Momir Vig out and we cast a green cascade creature, which there are quite a few of, we can stack the triggers so that we get something that we want to cascade into onto the top of our library. And then the cascade goes off and we cast it for free. On top of that, it's optional. So if we want to use Averna to get lands, we don't have to tutor. Prime Speaker Zagana and Tishana Voice of Thunder, both are big creatures that will draw us cards based on what we already have on the battlefield. Great card advantage and will let us get really deep into our library. Tatiova Benthic Druid will trigger off of Averna's lands being put into play, which is super powerful and belongs in any land heavy deck, which this deck is. Soul of the Harvest draws us cards whenever non-token creatures enter the battlefield. Very good for all the creatures we're going to be casting. 
Next, we have Seasons Pass, one of the few non-permanent spells in our deck and one of the only recursion spells, but it will let us get a lot of cards back from our graveyard to cast and cascade off of once again. Another one of our non-permanent spells is Shared Summons which lets us search for high CMC creatures to cast and cascade right out of our hands. And casting this for five mana when we can cast something for six on the next turn is a really good place to be. And finally, we have Zendikar Resurgent, which serves both as a mana doubler and a second copy of Beast Whisperer. Let's just get more card advantage and gives us some mana advantage as well. Now we're going to be going over the cards with Cascade in this deck. As I mentioned in the beginning, there aren't a lot. And with the restrictions that we've put on ourselves for deck building, we have even fewer available to us than what we could have before. In total, we are running 17 spells with Cascade, which is still a pretty good number, considering before Commander Legends, we could only run six. One card that I wanted to point out that we're not including is Flamekin Herald, which gives our Commander spells Cascade. It's a very good card, but since our commander has CMC3, this will literally do nothing for our deck because we can't even pull a land out since Averna won't be on the battlefield yet. It's a great card, just not for this deck in particular. All right, with that out of the way, here are our generic includes for Cascade. We've got Annoyed Altasaur, Aurora Phoenix, Blood Raid Elf, Boarding Party, Maelstrom Colossus, Sweet Gum Recluse, Sakashima's Protégé, Ingenuity Engine, and Meteoric Mace. These are the creature and artifact spells that have Cascade, and basically that's their only function in the deck. There are some shenanigans you can do with them, like Sakashima's Protégé coming in as a copy of something that entered this turn, but overall they just let us cast another spell and give us some ramp advantage with our commander. These next cards have a little bit more utility. Let's start with Apex Devastator, a ridiculous 10 mana creature that gives us four cascades. It's the best of the best cascade out there, and it will potentially get us four lands with our commander out. Next, we have Ethereum Horn Sorcerer, which doesn't look like much, but we can return him to our hand and cast him again and get that cascade trigger again. This can be really valuable if we're having trouble finding things to cast and need something to recur. Emoti Celebrant of Bounty does give all of our CMC 6 or greater spells cascade which is an awesome ability that would be great to have on our commander for another deck tech. It synergizes so well with this deck and it's great to pull it off the top and give some extra cascade to your spells. Maelstrom Wanderer is a beast of a cascade commander that we're main decking just because he has two cascade triggers on him. He also gives all of our creatures haste, which is important for the cascade synergy and we're going to get into that a little bit more in the next section. Next we have Throws of Chaos. This is a four CMC sorcery that has Cascade and Retrace, which means we can repeatedly cast it if we have lands in our hand to discard. I don't imagine that we're going to have a lot of reason to do that unless we're needing more ramp. Since this is towards the bottom of the curve, we're probably going to get pretty deep and have a lot of options for lands to pull out with Averna. And if we don't get pretty deep, we can maybe pull something out like Animar or one of our mana rocks. Next we have Volcanic Torrent. This is a kind of board wipe. If you play your cards right, at worst, you're going to be dealing two damage to each of your opponent's creatures and, and planeswalkers, which could be enough against some decks, but at best, you're going to get a lot of damage off. Forceful Denial is a counter spell with Cascade, and it's not really an efficient spell, and it's a little hard to justify including, but look at it this way. It's a counter spell that ramps with Averna out, and it's the only counter spell we have in our deck because of our deck building restrictions. So it's valuable just for that. And finally, we have Natural Reclamation, which is super expensive artifact or enchantment removal, but it has Cascade. So just like Forceful Denial, it's another auto include in this deck. All right, the best way I can describe this second to last section would be the cards that work well with our Cascade strategy. Let's start with Teamer Ascendancy and Rhythm of the Wild. Both of them give haste to all of our creatures, which is really, really important for Cascade triggers. Essentially, we're going to be getting a lot of creatures onto the battlefield all at once and are going to be able to swing with them out of nowhere with one of these out. And that's very useful to catch our opponents off guard. Next, we have Rashmi Eternity's Crafter. This is nice little extra cascade attached to it for all of the first spells we cast per turn. It's not exactly the same, but at the worst, it gets us an extra card in our hand and we can play it or cast it later. Next, we have Mind's Dilation, which 
doesn't trigger off of our casts. It does trigger off of our opponent's first cast each turn. That can be some pretty sweet advantage for us to continue to cast spells and get cast trigger payoffs. Speaking of cast triggers, we've got Sunbird's Invocation. It doesn't trigger off of cascaded spells, but just like Rashmi, it's an additional cascade effect that happens on the t on top of each of the spells that we cast. Next, we have Scute Swarm, Avenger of Zendikar, and Rampaging Bayloths. All of these are super powerful landfall creatures, and we can use them to take advantage of all of the lands we're going to be getting into play with Averna on the battlefield. Teamer Sabretooth will let us recur powerful cascade creatures that cost a lot with, with an ability that doesn't cost a lot which is super valuable in this deck. Next, we have Surak Dragonclaw and Nylea, God of the Hunt. Both of them will give trample to all of our big creatures when cheating them out. Surak also prevents our creature spells from being countered and is just an overall great card for protecting our cascade chains. Next, we have Brynolin, the Moon Kraken. This is a six CMC synergies card. I'm not 100% sold on it, but it can provide some much needed interaction in this deck and can provide some recursion for us as well. And finally, we have Leyline of Anticipation and Vivian Champion of the Wilds. Adding Flash to our deck is going to help a lot with cascading in response to other people, and this can save us in a lot of situations where we don't have a lot of interaction for the board. And now moving on to our final section, we have our mana base. I've kept it pretty simple here. No huge surprises other than Reliquary Tower, of course, because we're going to be drawing a lot of cards in this deck, hopefully. Other than that, we've got Breeding Pool, Cascade Bluffs, Cinderglade, Firelit Thicket, Flooded Grove, Frontier Bivouac, Hinterland Harbor, Ketria Trium, Rootbound Crag, and Sulphur Falls. And then we're playing 13 Forests, eight islands, and seven mountains. The deck is about 50% green and then 50% blue and red. So we're going to want a lot more green mana production than the other two, but we're still going to want a good balance so that we can consistently get Averna down on turn three. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video and want to support us in future videos, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley. It supports us directly. You get exclusive content, merch. You get to hang out on our Discord and brew decks like this all the time, and it's a blast to be one of our patrons. We've got some exciting new things that we want to do with our patrons next year, so make sure you check that out if you want to be a part of that. Thank you to GameGrid again for sponsoring all of our videos. If you go to the link in the description below, it's an affiliate link and it will help the channel if you purchase any of the cards on their site. They ship nationwide so you can get card singles wherever you are. You don't have to be local and they are just wonderful people to work with. Make sure you follow us on our social media for more updates. We are on Twitter and Facebook. Links to those in the description below. Thank you again for watching. I feel like this is one of the strangest decks that I've ever built but in playtesting it a bit it really is very very fast uh, once once you get a verna out you're getting so many lands getting so many cascade triggers it's insane to play this deck and i really recommend it it's a lot of fun so hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and happy christmas everyone mm -hmm.